making history in a lot of interesting and bad ways. <laughs> DC dysfunction. ESPN 980's Steve Zabin and the Washington Post Master Tefasian break down the Redskins break up. not so much about being a savior it's about surrounding yourself with good people and that's why I knew with Bruce for sure he was a really good guy been around football been around world championships himself and I've known Bruce for a long time you know back to the greater days with my father my father always highly respected him not just as a football guy from the standpoint of money and contracts and that but just as a person honest loyal fair Oh, what a difference two years make. That was former Redskins general manager Scott McLuhan. Tonight, we are joined by Steve Zabin with ESPN 980 and Master Tesfasian with The Washington Post. Guys, what's your reaction to hearing just two years ago what McLuhan was saying? Uh, it was all a bunch of lies. <laughs> they all thought that this was going to work out in some way where they could actually function as a proper organization. It's almost like it was set up to fail. I believe that's what Jerry Brewer, your colleague, said, that, you know, the two sides didn't have an honest accounting of their own shortcomings. The Redskins weren't honest in how they were setting this up, and obviously uh, it looks like that Scott was not maybe honest in terms of his preparedness for this job. He probably thought this job was going to be much more than you know actually functioning as a real NFL general manager, yeah. which at the end of the day, it was Bruce Allen who was still pulling all the yeah. strings, and it wasn't necessarily what he thought it would be. But the damage is that the fans, Master, really felt duped by this because he was presented, McLuhan was presented as he will have total control of the roster and the personnel, but one of the first tells that that was not going to be the case is he didn't get to bring in any of his own guys, any of his own assistant scouts, area scouts. They just plugged him in in between Jay and, and Bruce and below Dan, and he really didn't have the power that was built. So what do you feel like what went wrong in this relationship that did lead us to this point? At the end of the day, it comes down to egos. It's, it, this team was on the right path. Everyone had thought that everything was going according to plan, and they, this could be a, a big offseason with the cap space they had, mm -hmm. with the draft picks they had accumulated, that they could finally establish themselves as a perennial contender in the NFC. And at the end of the day, a lot of people were trying to give Scott McLuhan the credit for that, and other people in the organization decided that, that would not be no. the case. Quarterback Kirk Cousins just signing his franchise tag, getting close to $24 million. Did the team handle this situation correctly? On Kirk? Kirk. No, they're still not handling it correctly. In fact, I think their leverage is dwindling by the day. I think, I still believe that Kirk will be traded by the draft. I think the draft tends to have this gravitational pull that makes teams buy into what they really, really want. I think the Niners, as the draft gets closer, are going to really start to get into it with, we got to have Kirk now. And Just my own thought. I, and I, I think there's, great, there's a lot of logic in that thinking because it didn't make sense for them to try and trade him before free agency or, or right at free agency because you're trying to lure free agents to Washington. If a trade does happen, like the Sam Bradford trade last year, which we saw Minnesota acquire uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles, right. that happened before the draft. If anything does happen, I believe it would happen a week before the draft. But from everyone I'm talking to right now, in the foreseeable future, it seems like right now, Kirk Cousins here to stay. Yeah, and you can't keep renting a franchise quarterback yeah. year after year. Will they you be able can. to sign him to well, something long term? It, it depends on who you believe, right, yeah. in terms of whether he'll ever sign a long term deal here. I, I completely agree. It, it, it seems more difficult by the day, and if they don't get anything done this offseason, it's hard to think they can get something done in 2018 if he plays on the franchise tag. Well, not to mention the loss of Pierre Garçon and Deshaun Jackson to free agency. This is the first time in NFL history <laughs> a team has lost two win thousand yard wide receivers in one off season. We're making history in a lot of interesting and bad <laughs> ways. First team to do that. First team to fire their general manager on the first day of free agency. So tag their yeah. franchise quarterback two, back to back years. years. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I would have liked to have kept one of the two free agent wide receivers. I was a Pierre guy, so that was my guy. But with Pryor and on paper master, they've got Weapons, assuming Josh Doxson is as good as his Instagram feed is showing right now. And that's the biggest question. There's a lot of ifs, but there's a lot of potential in what they have offensively. I mean, we saw the ability of Jamison Crowder has shown the last two seasons. Maurice Harris has shown a lot of potential as, as someone with a lot of upside. The same with Terrell Pryor is a young guy that has still a lot of potential in him. So there, there's still a lot of weapons. And obviously, they re signed Vernon Davis as well. Yep. So there are a lot of weapons still in this offense for it to thrive. It's just how long will it thrive for, as we saw with the Deshaun Jackson, Pierre Garçon's absence. Pryor could just as easily leave the next year as well. I think they need a running yeah. back, too, still. No offense, Fat Rob. No offense, Fat Rob. I still want to see another running back. I, I, like, I like the combination of Fat Rob and Chris okay. Thompson. I think it could work. So, Master, you've covered the Redskins for two years. 
Steve, you've covered it for 18 <laughs> As long years. as Snyder's on yeah. the team, don't blame me. Yeah. I'm just observing. So after everything that has happened in these last couple days, on a scale of like zero to crazy, where would you put these last couple days? <laughs> Before I was here, I covered the Minnesota Vikings, and they had their own issues dealing with the Adrian Peterson situation, oh, yeah. the Chris Cluey situation. So for That's some reason, funny. crazy seems to follow me. I, yeah. I don't know if it's me or <laughs> this organization I'm covering, but... Uh, this is up there. I mean, yeah. you don't fire a general manager on the first day of free agency and expect like this is not crazy. I think it was. I think it was really embarrassing and, and bad the way it ended. It doesn't mean though that going forward you're screwed because we have to see what emerges as the new structure going forward. And personally, while we're talking GM, Doug Williams is the choice. He's in house. He's experienced, and I think he can bring a little bit of humanity to the front office to say, let's not do it that way. All of it stuff that we know you guys will keep an eye on. We'll keep an eye on. We'll bring you guys the latest. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll have more sports final after this.